What's up, YouTube? Uh, it's your friend Anonymous Bosk uh, here, coming at you with another video. Um, this one is about um, book series that I've collected that I found in my original unboxing video. Um, I knew some of those books that I unboxed. Uh, it's actually a four-part series. Uh, turned out to be um, a lot of books and took longer than I expected, and I had a few interruptions, but. Um, I got this big book off, uh, box off eBay, and it had 59 books in it, and I got a bonus book that I just ordered for myself, and so I showed all of those in a four-part series. You can go back and look that up if you want, so if you're interested in the book stuff, but uh, some of these books that I'm going to show today are ones that I have found around town that have uh, completed or almost completed those uh, series. Uh, but first, uh, before I get into the video, uh, I just want to give a shout out to my band, Mutates. Um, M-U-T-A-T-E-S, Mutates. Uh, we just released a new album, it's called Noetic Dernada. It came out maybe like a week or so ago. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about it. Uh, we incorporated some different styles uh, than what we've done before. and. Um, I'm really excited about this one, and one of the uh, songs on the album is called You Know It To Be True, and I also have a video of that song on my YouTube, and uh, the video is not the studio version of the song, it's actually a live performance that I did that was on top of a rock um, at my uh, roommate, friend, and landlord's other property in Ramona, California, which is kind of nearby here to San Diego. So we went out there and um, I played the song, got the audio from one shot that was shooting up uh, at me and that got the audio really good and we used a little bit of that throughout the video and then my uh, friend, uh, he filmed all the rest of it and I just kind of walked around. He has a really nice little property out there and some some land and acreage and it's, it's really pretty and nice and quiet out there. And, uh, I did a video for You Know It To Be True, which is one of the songs on our new Mutates record, Noetic Der Nada. So yeah, you can check that out on Bandcamp, you can check it out right here on YouTube Music or on Spotify and other streaming uh, platforms. So yeah, go check that out, Mutates Noetic Der Nada. Okay, now let's go ahead and uh, get into the video. So one of the books that I got in my uh, in my box was this one, Lee Brackett, The Hounds of Scaith, and I was really interested in this cover in the back too. I was gushing over it in the video, and um, I still I believe it's a beautiful cover. So I went out and I found these. I found the Ginger Star. And spoiler alert, I've read The Ginger Star already, because I was really excited to get into this, and I'm actually later on going to talk about a few books that I've read um, from the box. Um, so I'm going to put, here goes The Ginger Star. This is the first book in the uh, Book of Scaith, which is a three-book uh, series. And this one came out in 1974. So this, this first one came out in 1974, Ginger Star. And then, the second book is Hounds of Scaith, which you've seen. And then I found the third book, uh, The Reavers of Scaith. Really sick cover on this one too. And it's done by uh, Starenko, who is um, the guy at the bookstore really admires uh, Starenko's art. And, um, so that made me look twice at it. It doesn't wrap around like Hounds of Scaith, but that, that's a really cool um, cover. And I can't wait to finish this uh, trilogy because uh, Ginger Star was absolutely amazing. And I'll talk about that, a little bit about that later. I'm not gonna do book reviews um, for these books that I've read. I'm just gonna kind of give my just quick two cents in on them. Another one that I got in that box, and what I was taken by the cover, was this one. Exiles at the Well of Souls. You remember this dude, of course. Well, if you watched the video and you heard me talk about him, you probably remember him. 
um, Exiles at the Well of Souls by Jack Chalker. And I found out uh, that this is a series, and actually another one I got in that box was this one. The Return of Nathan Brazil. And I didn't know where Nathan Brazil went, but I was like, all right, I guess we'll find out. And on this one, it actually says volume four of the saga of the well world. So I was like, oh, saga of the well world. What's that? You know? So I went out and I found pretty much the rest of them. So here's the first one in the series, Midnight at the Well of Souls. Midnight at the Well of Souls, and this came, when did this come out? This came out in 1977, this one. So that's around when the series kind of started coming out. So there's Midnight at the Well of Souls. The second book, I believe, is Exiles. The third book is Quest for the Well of Souls. Look at that cover, man. Quest for the Well of Souls. The fourth one is Nathan Brazil. And then the fifth one, Twilight at the Well of Souls. And then, so these were all kind of written close to each other, you know, around the same time period. And then I believe 10 or 20 years later or something, Jack, uh, Jack L. Chalker returns uh, to the well world. So I don't have those and there's two more installations that I don't have. So yeah, those are some um, series in that trilogy that you know, because of that unboxing video, it sparked my interest and I found out. Uh, there's one more series that's in there. There's a couple more series actually. Uh, the one Cruiser Dreams, I think it's Janet Morris is the artist. I can't remember, I don't have the book on hand, but that's the second one in a series. Uh, I wanna try to find the rest of those. And um, correct me if I'm wrong on that author or that book. I could be wrong on the name, um, but I believe it is called Cruiser Dreams, and it had a really cool cover. And then there's the Green Star, uh, the Green Star series. I got the fifth one and the last one, and um, so I want to go out and try to find those. It was a DAW book, and it was really cool. Um, okay, so now I'll go ahead and move along. Um, I've been, of course, getting more books, always more books. There so cheap and they're so cool and um, so I'll show you some some other ones that I've uh, collected. Let's start with uh, Andre Norton. Andre Norton, Moon Mirror. Really like, really like this cover. And Andre Norton is an, an author I don't have any of her stuff. Uh, this one also has zero on the number line, so it was a first print, but it's still real pretty new. It's a tour, tour book, 1989. But it really feels even newer than that. I mean, it's really like not even been touched. This is a nice copy of Moon Mirror. Then I got uh, Larry Niven. I got World of Tabs. So they had two versions of this where I went and I chose this one. I really, really liked this cover. Um, this is a Valentine book. And uh, this printing is from 1971. But this was originally from 1966. Larry Niven, World of Pass, The Tabs. Oh, and I found a uh, Philip K. Dick Radio Free Albemuth. A Philip K. Dick old school uh, paperback. I was, I was stoked to find that. You know, I haven't heard of this one before, but I do love uh, Philip K. Dick. And this is an Avon book, and it's got three on the number line. Uh, it was printed in 87. 
copyright 1985 by the estate of Philip K. Dick. So maybe this didn't come out before, but the estate of Philip K. Dick uh, copyrighted this in 1985. So I'm excited to get into it. I really, I enjoy Philip K. Dick, so he's a great writer. Next we have uh, from a classic author, Edgar Rice Burroughs, The Moon Maid. This one's smaller. Um, it's a little shorter, you know, height-wise than some of the other ones. It's an ace science fiction book. It was 40 cents originally. So this is an old school one. Hmm. I don't know when it was printed. Maybe 50s. The Moon Maid. And we got Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451. Man, he's really torching it, this guy. I thought this was a pretty cool, it's a Del Rey edition. I do enjoy the Del Rey books. Um, their covers and they're fun. They're good to read. Copyright 1953. This is from 1976. So this is a middle 70s version of Fahrenheit 451. I haven't read it. Uh, the only Bradbury I've read is Martian Chronicles. I really liked that one. And uh, I really need to read more of his stuff. I just, you know, haven't uh, haven't gotten around to it yet. But uh, this one's really interesting. This is uh, Treasure Island. And it's got, this is just how it came. It's a really old, old school one. And I don't think, I think it was made, like, printed maybe before they started, like, I think it's really old. But it's got some, um, let's see. It has someone's name written on it, but it's got, it's got illustrations like that throughout. Let's see if I can... Here goes one right here. But yeah, I really like Treasure Island. I read it a while ago, and um, Robert Louis Stevenson. Companion Library is what it says on it. So I was happy to find, I mean, older the better, I always say, you know. Next, we got Stephen King, The Wastelands. This is the third, um, there goes Stephen right there. This is the third uh, book in the Dark Tower uh, series. I have only read Gunslinger so far. I really liked it. And, um, and then the next, uh, you know, pretty soon after I got Gunslinger, I went and got um, Drawing of the Three, which is the second book. And now I have this one, uh, The Wastelands. Uh, this is the same, like it's Signet, and it's the same uh, release as my Gunslinger, but my Drawing of the Three is an older one. I think it's from the 70s or 80s or something, or probably 80s actually, but yeah, The Wastelands. Um, that one's pretty big, but I think the type is, oh yeah, the type is enormous, so, all right. And then we got Clifford D. Simak, Cemetery World. I haven't read uh, Simak yet, um, but I can't, can't wait to start, and this is a DAW book. Um, yeah, I mean, the cover is incredible, and it was really cheap. It's got a one on the number line, and uh, the DAW printing from 1983, and the copyright is 1972. Cemetery World. Alright, next we got A.E. Van Vogt, The Players of Noel A. I 
really like this cover and that purple on the back too. Um, yeah, I've been wanting to get into this one. This is a Berkeley uh, edition. Let's see, it's a little, it was also cheap. It's a little uh, kind of crusty, but it's, let's check it out. So the copyright is 1948, so it's an old school story. And this uh, Berkeley Medallion Edition, it's the fifth printing from 1974. Layers of Noel A. I want to read more of his stuff. I've read Slant, and I really enjoyed that. Um, these next two I got at the Goodwill. Um, all those other ones I got at bookstores, but this, these two I got at the Goodwill uh, for a dollar a piece. And so the first one we got is Animal Farm, George Orwell. This is just a classic story. Um, I read it um, semi-recently, and um, I really enjoyed it. 1964 is this printing. It's the 16th printing, and the copyright's 1946. George Orwell, Animal Farm, Signet. And the last one I got for you is actually not science fiction, it's uh, philosophy, and it's uh, Albert Camus, The Myth of Sisyphus. And other essays. This is an old school one as well. Um, but it's in very good condition. I mean, the pages are in great condition. Ooh. It smells good. It smells good. The copyright on this is 1955. Okay, the original, it was originally published in 1942. Oh uh, yeah, this is really cool. <laughs> And those last two, Animal Farm and uh, Myth of Sisyphus, were just a dollar at uh, the Goodwill. So, I mean, sometimes if you go to Goodwill, you can find some stuff. Uh, most of the time, not. But uh, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to go check. Uh, I look at Goodwill also for records, and uh, you got to sit on the floor uh, most of the time, at least whatever Goodwill I go to, and you just kind of sift through all of the crap and eventually like I found a really cool I found a few really cool ones there you just gotta really sift through some stuff uh, same with the books you know the good thing about books is you can kind of you can first of all if it's a hardcover I immediately am not interested usually and um, so you can rule those out pretty quick and then also you know you just look at the spines and if anything looks interesting or you see a good author you know you can check it out Okay, so the final uh, phase of the video that I want to do is I want to just talk about some books that I've read um, since the unboxing video, and a few of them, I think three or four of them I've got in the unboxing um, video that I did before, and I think that was maybe a couple weeks ago or something. But uh, anyway, so the first one I'll start with is Ginger Star, my lead bracket. Um, this is the last book I read. It's an uh, Eric John Stark adventure, and uh, it was awesome. Um, the writing was amazing. The story was amazing. Um, it follows uh, John Stark, who lands on an uh, alien planet, and he's in search of his friend. And um, so he's his friend and mentor. Um, he's searching for on this planet Scaife and he finds all these different you know types of people and gets into all these different scenarios and one second he's free the next second he's captured the next second he's doing this the next second he's doing that it's a really great really great read uh, I enjoyed it a lot and uh, I almost couldn't put it down it was very very good the ginger star I read that one and then the one I'm currently reading, I'm not done with it yet, but we got Time Scoop. Yeah, I really liked the, the cover for this one, and I haven't read anything by John Brunner, but I wanted to check something out. And 
it's goofy, it's silly, it's um, it's just it's fun. You know, I've been enjoying it a lot. I, it's no Ginger Star. Um, it's probably the weakest of um, the books that I've been reading so far. But it's okay. Not every book has to be some profound miracle of creation. You know, it's it is very funny. It's very witty. It's good and. Um, I've been enjoying it a lot, and basically, uh, Harold Frietes um, is like pretty much the richest man in, on earth, and it's like the year 2066, and um, he has this grand idea to have a family reunion, but not your typical family reunion. He uses his time scoop, which is sort of a time machine that scoops things out of the past and brings them into the present, and he time scoops uh, his ancestors, and he gets a profile on his ancestors um, by some guy, and um, all of the, he kind of, the guy who makes up the profiles for his ancestors kind of butters them up and makes them seem a little cooler than they actually were, so once they actually do get into the correct time, they have this family reunion party at the Grand Canyon, and well, you know, things just start the people from the past don't act, you know, in an appropriate way for the present, uh, in this case the future. But it's really funny and silly and nothing too serious, you know, time scoop. It's been fun. It's been fun for sure. I'm almost done with it already. I just started the other day. Then I read um, Michael Moorcock, Alien Heat. In Alien Heat. And uh, this is the first book in a trilogy that I, of course, I've been looking everywhere I go. I look for Michael Moorcock and try to find the other ones in this trilogy. Um, but they're kind of hard to find. I've seen them on eBay and stuff, so I've considered it, but I haven't really been in the position lately to, you know, order anything uh, substantial on eBay. So, but yeah, an Alien Heat, Michael Moorcock. So this one is a uh, Jarek Carnelian uh, adventure and um, it's super fun and the writing is really good it's almost juvenile um, in a way and um, but it's a fantasy um, and it's so much fun and um, I highly recommend it it starts out there at this party and an alien uh, an alien lands whatever on their planet and tells everybody that the world is gonna end soon uh, within the next thousand years or something and said you know something needs to be done and everybody just kind of takes it as a joke and everybody on this universe has um, they're like their own version of a zoo they have and they collect people from other times and other places people and animals and all this stuff and they create these habitats for them I forget what they call it in the book but they every all the characters sort of have the, these zoos and most of them most of them are like immortal and stuff it's really it's a far out there uh, book, and a lot of weird and, and crazy and cool things happen. Um, and I enjoyed it a lot um, in Alien Heat. Um, yeah, I would highly recommend checking that one out for sure. Um, I have, that's the only more cock I've read, but uh, I'm craving for more cock, you know? I just am. He's a great writer. And. Uh, yeah, I want to get my hands on more of his, uh, more of his books. Um, and then the next one, you know what? I'm going to save the best for last. The next one that I read is uh, Silent Invaders. I'm not saying that Silent Invaders wasn't great. Um, Silent Invaders, I loved it. Um, and so here, this is the face of the alien. But those aliens make, turn themselves terraform themselves or whatever into humans so that they can blend in on earth and so this is the face of the earth man who he becomes he has a blue eye here and a red eye here and green skin here and his nose is up so i love how this cover illustrates like how because that's the the main part of the book is that these two different alien races are trying to sort of win over earth and so they both come down and they're they're disguised as earth people and so the main character he is like religiously devoted to his alien people and he's sent on this mission to earth to go try to you know 
win it, win it over or win over its favor, because Earth is a major player in the, in the galaxy, in this universe here. And so he comes down and his, he meets this woman who, um, you know, he really likes and there's, you know, come to find out pretty early on in the book that the woman is part of the alien race, the other alien race from another planet who his, his people despise. And they're like mortal enemies or, you know, alien enemies. And um, so the whole book is about his mission and how things go sort of awry. awry. And um, we also find out that there's these, there's Earth people who are like super specimens who, um, you know, it's like the, the regular Earth human, but like completely evolved, like super humans, uber mensch people who are actually more powerful than any of them. And uh, the, so the opposing alien race of the main character is sort of like in cahoots with the Earthmen, and it's an interesting story. It was pretty cool. It's had a lot of action, and you know, it was it was pretty good. All right, and the last one, the last one that I read, and the first one that I picked up right away from the unboxing is here, uh, Left Hand of Darkness. There's the Kale again. Wow, um, I absolutely loved. Left Hand of Darkness. I consider it probably one of the best books I've ever read. It was absolutely amazing. It was more sci-fi than, or sorry, it was more fantasy than sci-fi, but it, there were, were still heavy sci-fi elements and it took place on an alien planet with aliens and you learn that they are neither male or female. And um, when it does come time, it's called Kemmer, and when it does come time for them to mate, they assume their roles in that two to three day window and then they go back to being uh, androgynous sort of you know sexless uh, humans and there's so much more to it i mean there's there's that aspect and there's also all of their ancient legends like some of the some of the passages in the book describe you know sort of the alien races like ancient legends like our version of like you know looking way back in time like bible stories or something of the human race but like their version and i just thought that was those passages were so interesting and there's a poem in here that absolutely and i know exactly what page it's on 222 and it's it really the prose the writing in this book is absolutely stunning it's phenomenal uh, the storytelling the world building and it's not even that long of a book and even still it's like it packs a lot into a little package and uh ursula kale again i mean this is the second book i've read from her the first one was the wizard of earthsea and i really want to continue reading her stuff i think she's uh, brilliant and um so this i want to read you this this part um it's a poem and it goes, Light is the left hand of darkness, and darkness the right hand of light. Two are one, life and death, lying together like lovers in Kemmer, like hands joined together, like the end and the way. So that poem right there, I mean, that really got me. And um, there was so much already before, but by the time I got to page 222 and I was reading that, um, yeah, it just spoke to me, um, and it was, yeah, this book, I highly recommend this book, uh, Left Hand of Darkness, Ursula K. Le Guin. Well, all right, that's about all I got for you. We're approaching the half hour mark here, so I think this may be a good time to sign off. Uh, one more time, my band is called Mutates, and we just released a record called Noetic Dernada. It's our second full-length release. Uh, of this year and we also released an EP so we've had a busy a busy year and uh, we're based here in San Diego um, our earlier albums are, are punk uh, the newer album is explores kind of a new direction and um, anyways well I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and um, yeah keep it real see ya